Hello, hope you're having a good day. Today we are going to be looking at how to model the accelerating cavity or accelerator cavity, um, whichever you like to call it. And we're going to be doing this with parameters so that it's easy to modify the dimensions or even I'm run an optimization. So the parameters are in literature usually named like this. So your equator radius, your REQ, your BA, um, BA um, related to the iris or closer to the iris, your ellipse close to the equator, your ellipse um, at the iris, and then your RI, your iris radius, and then you have your alpha, which is the angle that this straight section um, subsends from the positive horizontal axis, although in some other lit literature you could see some other definition, but anyhow it is not important because we actually need just seven of these variables, one, two, three, four, five, six, and L to fully define the structure. So we do not actually need alpha, although sometimes it is reported in literature, but then it is measured. So let's get right into it. So as usual, you open your application um, and then you get to new recent. So we could go into an analysis, we could go into 3D simulation and um, build it since it's just geometry we are building, it doesn't really matter, but then I'll go into high frequency. So the analysis doesn't really matter for now as we just want to um, get around building the modeling the geometry so first thing as always check your units and i like working in our millimeters then our megahertz or rather the frequency i work with and the dimensions i work with most times are in millimeters you could also leave it in gigahertz or meters or whatsoever but then just make sure to check because it would affect the results of the analysis later but then we are not interested in that currently so it doesn't really matter so um, we are done, I'm defining uh, units. Next, we define the parameters. So to define new parameters, we just double click on this. So that is double clicking on this. And then if I like writing it A, we could pick um, a value of um, 42. I'm going to try to match the famous Tesla shape. So this is B and I think it's also 42 for the Tesla geometry and then we have small a but then we can't define small a because um, this is not really case sensitive so instead I call it AI which is A at the iris sometimes I call this AEQ so I guess I could use AEQ for this and BEQ for this just so that it is unique so for AI I think for Tesla cavity it should be 12 or 19 then for the BI this should be 19, neither of them is um 19 and then the other is 12 for the mid cell. And then what else? RI, RI should be, I think it should be, maybe I'll just pull that up real quick. Um, that's a cavity geometry. Um, so just a second. Okay, so we could see the we could see the um, definitions of the variables and let's see where it is written. Yes, so we have that your equator radius is a hundred and three, your iris radius is thirty five. So we'll go right in and um, input thirty five. Then what else do we have? We have um, radius of the arc forty two. And then this for the mid cup, then A is 12 and 19. Oh, I got that. Then what we need is um the length, which is 57.7, and the equator is just 103.3. So the length is 57.7, which is the half cell length, and then your REQ is 103.3. So that's all we need for the definition. Remember, like I said, alpha is not very important. You just need these seven um, variables to fully constrain your geometry. So we've got everything we need now right into the modeling. So for the 
for the accelerating cavity, the geometry is already defined um, in the macros. So you go to your macros and you go to construct, then parts, then you go to superconducting cavity. So it's already here, although in principle, you could actually model it from primitives and curves. We're going to be looking at those later, um, creating like complex geometries such as the accelerating cavity. But for now, we stick to the macro and you could see a similar image being pulled up here. So you just have to match. You just have to match the geometry. So this is RI. Yes, this is RI. This is REQ. So R1 is RI. R2 is REQ. Then RX2 is A or AEQ. And um, RY2 is BEQ. So we we'll just go right in and you already see that it has the, I mean, by default, it has the Tesla um, cavity geometry and figures. But then if we should um, create the cavity like this, which is the half cell like this, we wouldn't be able to um, change the parameters later and affect the change directly in the model. So instead we replace it with uh, parameters. I think this should be... R, R, R1 is RI, then we have this as L and this is REQ, then this should be AEQ and this should be BEQ, this is some um, AI and this is BI. So doing this, we've created the half cell of the geometry. We've created the half cell of the geometry and if we were to try to edit this some other time, it would directly affect the geometry without having to build a new geometry so that's the power of um, parametric modeling so since i like working in the z-axis so i like that my cavities i'm oriented along the z-axis i'm going to do some transformations to this so in case this is not already selected if you check here you see that these options are not available transform align but and that's because you haven't checked the component so sometimes there are different solids in the component. So if you want to do a component-wide um, transformation, you click on the component. But then if you want to um, affect just the change in a particular solid, you click on the solid inside the component. So this is um, what we have. So since it's just one solid and one component, it doesn't matter where we apply transformations. I'm just going to apply to the solid too. So we could translate, rotate, or scale. So what I want to do is to rotate it and I want to rotate it about the Y axis. So rotating about the Y axis and that is 90 degrees about the Y axis so that then you could also preview and you could preview. And what I'm using to actually rotate like this in 3D is control, then left mouse click hold and then just rotate. So that's it then to, to move to pan, you click and hold your middle mouse button and move around so you could see a preview of how it's now oriented it's oriented um, to the z axis so you could either copy but then we are not copying we are just rotating so i could apply this and then i have it now oriented along the z now since we since um we this is just the half cell we have to create a full cell and also it's i mean preference to um have it aligned along the that's the midpoint should be on the grid so that's at the zero zero um of the um that this should be the xy axis yes the xy axis so i'm going to translate this and i'm going to translate it by now when working with parameters it is very important so that it's very important to keep all your dimensions in the parameter as much as is possible so that when you make changes it's to, it updates um, model wide so it doesn't just update at one point and then you have some other um, inconsistencies what i mean is this i want to translate this so if i should click zero if i should click three then it orients it this way if i should click six it orients it um, this way so you could also use your shortcuts which is one two three four five six i think i could show that so you could also look at them here select view so perspective front to back left you see all, all of the shortcuts so i want to move it this distance so i want to translate it from such that this this point comes from here to here 
now this is just l i just have to translate it l but then it's i should actually translate it by l in the z instead of writing the value of l so i could preview and um where is it oh this is still in rotate sorry so six again so it's still in rotate so you could just change to translate so translating i translate by l so preview you could see the preview now this would be different um from translating it by 57.7 although they are the same value you see that 57.7 is fixed but then l can vary since it's a parameter so i could apply it remember i'm not also copying so to complete this cell i have to mirror i could either mirror or rotate but then if i should rotate then i would have to move this but that's um um a bit too complex but so mirror works so mirroring about the z axis so i'm just going to put a 90 degree mirror about the z axis and then you see so along the direction it is pointing so 90 degrees and that's but then in this case we want to copy it so we want to copy the we want to copy the geometry and not rotate it so that we have a complete cell so i could also select to unite it but i leave it for now and i click apply now i have the cell although this cell doesn't really look like i think maybe i got some dimensions i think maybe i got some dimensions wrong but then it's not very important i think some dimensions are actually wrong but then it's it's not it's not important it's the modeling it's what's more important so um i think with that we are done we could add um, the beam pipes or some other things now um let's see so we have a cavity now we could perform some other operations on it we could now like i said if i should want to apply transformation if i click on jersey solid it affects jersey solid but then if i click on the component it affects everything so i could decide to transform this and make it a two cell cavity so to transform it i could actually use a mirror a rotator a translate so to keep everything aligned to the um, center line which is on um, the grid you see here i just like moving translating and then um translating and mirroring so if i should translate the entire the entire geometry now what do i want i want this point to be at the center so from here to here is from this point to any point along this from this point to this place the horizontal distance is l now remember again you do not write the actual value of l but you write l so you could preview and if it is translated we do not want to copy so we apply and then now we can mirror so to get a two cell i just have to mirror this on the z and i can preview and then you have oh sorry about that now i have to copy it i have to um, include copy so mirror copy 90 or else it just moves it to the other side so that's it and i could do that for to replicate some different cells so you see that i have so many solids here i could also combine them to one to one whole component so i could click and then to select either i use control or shift and then select everything sorry yes and i could boolean which is um i could um i could perform a boolean operation add subtract, and this will come in handy when creating more complex structures so for now i just want to combine the whole shapes so I click on add and then we have just one whole solid. Now for the beam pipes, the beam pipes could be modeled in different way, but then the easiest is to click on select a face. Now to click on different, you have um, different elements, your faces, your edges, and also your, your solid, basically. So we could pick your faces, or you have your points, your edges, and then your faces. So we could pick a face or shortcut we just press an f to pick a to pick a point i think you press a p let me see yes p to pick point and um, f to pick faces or you could also come here and um, pick face or pick edge e to pick edge then to deselect so for example if i should press f 
I double click on a face to pick a face. And then if I want to deselect the face, I just press the D. So clearing picks is D, or you could also click on the clear picks here. So for now, I want to click a face and um, I've clicked this face. Now what I want to do is to extrude for the beam pipe. Now before that, let's define a beam pipe length. So I could call this parametric, like call this L EP. And then typically it's um, about four, four of the, four multiplied by the length, the mid, the half cell length. So clicking on the face, maybe I do that again, D to the select F, I double click, I select the face. Now what I want to do is to extrude this face. Now extruding this face, I want to get the height to be LBP, then preview. So that's it. I could do the same for this side or I could mirror it over the grid. So since I've already demonstrated the other one, I could just use the mirror. So transform, mirror, and then I mirror it over the Z and then preview. It appears on the other side. Now remember to copy and I could leave out Unite for now. So it creates, so we have three different solids. Now again, I could perform a boolean and add everything. But then, like I said, it's not very compulsory. So there we have it, a two cell cavity. And let's look at um, the power of um, the, the parameterization. So I could easily change this to 45 and then enter. And all I have to do is to click on parametric update and it updates it. I could make this, I could basically change the shape from from here and then it's automatically up or not maybe automatically but then i could just click parametric update and it updates it as against if it were a fixed value then i just have this for i just have one value for the cavity and i can't play around with the geometry so thank you for watching and i hope you learned a thing or two i hope this was useful for you and um till next time bye